Hello and welcome back Super Mums. In today's video I've got an interview with the incredible Anna Parker Naples of the award-winning Inspiring Mummy Club. We're going to be diving into the comparison issue, why we don't feel good enough as mums these days and all other magical things around being yourself. So the original interview with Anna was really, really amazing, but a little bit too long and I wanted to make it into sort of two more bite-sized chunks for you. So there will be a secondary video that has a bit more of the interview in it. Best way to get that is to hit the subscribe and turn on your notifications because that won't be going out at our normal video time. That'll be going out at a different time during the month and you don't want to miss out on that one. Okay, so here we go. Today I am fangirling slightly. I am a little obsessed with this lady's amazing podcast. Uh, she runs the Inspiring Mummy Club. This is Anna Parker Naples. So I'm just really excited to have you here. <laughs> we have had a little chat beforehand, so I've kind of got a little bit of my fangirling out of my system and some of the nervous energy of today. Um, but it's amazing to have you here. I've got a little script up so I don't go too off kilter because we know I can do that a lot. Um, so I'll hand it over to you to introduce yourself and tell us a bit more about who you are work-wise and as a mummy. So my name is Anna Parker Naples and I'm founder of the award-winning, multi-award winning Inspiring Mummy Club. We launched a year and a quarter ago and I've had an absolute whirlwind of a journey. And last year I won an award where the other winners on the night were Rio Ferdinand, Adele, Holly Willoughby and Penny Lancaster, which was just kind of mind blowing in my first year of business. And basically Inspiring Mummy Club is all about helping mums who want a bit more out of their life so whether that's you feel you're not connecting with the right kind of people whether you find yourself being brought down by other people's negativity maybe you have some goals and ambitions or creative dreams that are really unfulfilled and you don't know how to go about getting those off the ground or maybe you've already started to do something but you want to be supported by other people on that journey and other material and resources that can help with your confidence um and in the club it's a monthly membership and we provide hypnosis which is all about confidence visualizations again another technique for subconscious mind meditation for helping you deal with stress and a full eight week mindfulness course as part of the package um, because I kind of see mindfulness is one a great tool for stress reduction but also once you go from that place of utter overwhelm once you've got that under control and you're managing it I feel like mindfulness is then it can be a springboard for what else you want to achieve in your life because you can start to see the things that aren't making you unhappy and start to notice the things that do make you happy um, so yeah I'm mad about just helping people have real concrete tools that they can incorporate mindfulness and mindset into their everyday life. It's all very well that we hear all about mindset, but how do you actually make that part of your daily routine? And then we launched the Inspiring Mummy Club podcast earlier this year as well, and we now have a huge following. Um, again, just one of those things that's grown, grown really naturally. Um, and that tends to be, not exclusively, but it tends to be interviews with mums who are out there I would say making life happen. So they are mums, they have struggles, they have challenges, but they're deciding actually, this is my time too, and I'm gonna make it count. So often, which is I think the thing that Jessica with Super Mum Society kind of finds as well. So often I find that people decide because they're a mum, they can't do anything and that there's no room for them. And for a long, long time, I used to feel that too, until some quite, very strong bizarre circumstances happened to me and I had to make some major changes and that's kind of what led to me starting Inspiring Mummy Club and having a creative career and creative ambitions and goals that I am now smashing so that's that's kind of me in a nutshell <laughs> amazing it the podcast has been I want to say game changing I love that phrase sorry game changing for me uh, and to have that kind of voice in my ear, I have a walk I, ha I do every day, with, uh, every day, that'd be nice, every week with the kid and I listen to your podcast and I'm, I'm a different person by the end of that walk. I'm a better person, I'm a happier person, 
it particularly has a good effect if I'm in a particularly bad mood uh, to lift me out of it. So I, I just really think you're making such a difference. So I was so honoured when you were like, yes, yes, I can do yeah. it. I, I can it's really guys- nice because when you when you do a podcast, you don't always hear from the listeners. We have thousands of people who listen every week, but people don't necessarily get in touch. And I, 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 as I talk about a lot in the podcast, I like to think it might just be that nugget, that little kernel that might make someone go, actually, I could do something different today. Maybe I have a business idea. Maybe I could get out, you know, my drawing equipment that I used to use. Maybe there's something I can do to look after myself that isn't just having a nice bubble bath but it's something that's actually going to help you on on a much deeper level. Um, I think that kind of leads quite nicely into our sort of the first area that we're going to talk about. I am going to look at my little line up here um, so I know what's going on. Um, Is this, this, this concept of not good enough because I think that's where quite a lot of not willing to invest this time because we're kind of like, well, we're not, we're not worth this, this sort of investment of time. Um, we, we're not, we're never going to be any better or we're just kind of sort of slumming our way through things. And I just sort of wanted to talk a little bit about where this, where this idea has come from. We touched on when we were talking about this before, about the, this kind of media sort of sensation of you're just a mum so just let things slide but actually that doesn't that doesn't work for everyone and that might be why you're not feeling good enough is because it's sort of a I don't feel like I'm explaining myself particularly well here well I think it's that balance between letting things go and not sweating the small stuff and actually doing things and actually getting through the things that actually give you a level of self-respect so we were talking about you know you know if you if you were to live in an untidy home that's fine if it doesn't bother you but if actually there's a part of you that feels that actually I'm not good enough because I don't look after my house at all and I'm sick of living in 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 a slovenly way then that doesn't actually fit you and that's actually going to keep you feeling quite stuck now on the other hand if it really does not bother you that that's that's how your home is um then it doesn't matter and let it go I think there's we kind of I kind of feel with a lot of the mummy blogging that's happening at the moment some of them are doing an absolutely amazing job but there is that increasing media portrayal that mums are all living for the next glass of wine and absolutely um completely winging it and um I think that that isn't the only way you can be. I think for me personally, I know that I'm a much better mum when I'm looking after myself. And that's again, I don't mean that as in I'm having a nice bubble bath. I mean as in looking after my mental and emotional welfare. Um, yeah. I'm looking after the kind of language that I use. I'm looking after the kind of materials that I listen to or that I read, that I'm surrounded by people who uplift me and motivate me. Um, rather than you know if i'm just spending the evening evening after evening just watching tv or reading trashy books or whatever it's fine to do any of those things as a part of your relaxation but if that's the only stimulus you're getting then where are you heading and um i yeah. think i think for me it's not and that's the thing with inspiring mummy club i'm not all about supporting mums who want businesses or who want jobs or who want to be high flyers I want people who are mums to just realise it's okay to be where you are right now and enjoy it, but also think about what it is that that makes you you. And um, I think so often, we talk about the imposter syndrome, so often as mums we feel like we're not good enough, we don't know what we're doing, um, and and how should we parent, that maybe everyone else has got it right and we're wrong. And what I really love about the cornerstone of NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, is that there is no concept of right or wrong. That's just a model that you've been fed and there are millions of other models of the world that you can look at. So if there's no right or wrong, then you can't get it wrong anyway. But looking yeah. after yourself, for me, fundamental is fundamental to being the kind of good parent in my, my model of the world. I'm, if I'm looking after myself, my kids are gonna get a better parent and I'm gonna be happier. I was finding myself, so my, my daughter's only, I say only 14 and a half months old, feels like I've had her for a million years and I feel like I was always meant to be her mum, so it's kind of like she's always been a part of me, but now she's this nearly walking ball of craziness and it was just that 
I have found that I was doing things very differently to a lot of the mums that I met in the early months. I have now connected with some mums that are more on my wavelength. I found one mum in particular that we are we are very sort of similar. We still parent completely differently, but we are much more on a similar wavelength. I'm not questioning everything I'm doing as a mum, which which is crazy because apologies, but I'm one of those mums whose kids leaked but I did routine and structure with her and I worked really hard at that. And my best friend is always telling me like, you need to stop saying you've got an easy kid because yes, yeah, she might, maybe she might be easy, but you also put the effort in and the groundwork in to be the kind of mum you want to be. And it's worked, it's worked well for you. But even when my, my child was sleeping, I was feeling like, oh, am I not good enough? Because I'm not giving her eight cuddles through the night because she keeps waking up. And that's crazy. Like I had the, the dream. So we all have we all have the negative self talk all the time and it's how much how much weight you put on that and it's whether you're gonna let that overpower you or not. Because well, we I, have- I chose to step away from some of those sort of mums that that I was meeting that were making me feel like even when I was and my partner again was very good at saying he was spotting me doing it and saying you're a great mom, this has worked out really well. Uh, she's such a happy kid because of what you're doing. And we don't all have partners that are telling us that, um, which is why I like telling other mums that and saying you need to realize quite how super you are. Um, I do get people saying the word super mum, it doesn't resonate with me. And then I get talking to them and they realize, oh, well, actually I am pretty super, but they haven't got, like I've got two people in my life telling me I'm doing well. And some people haven't got that and you need to be that voice for yourself and be like, yes, I am doing well. I might not be doing it the same as everyone else, but I'm doing it well. I'm doing it my way and my kid is healthy and happy. What? We need to stop judging ourselves. I think we are our worst judges. Um, yeah. So it's the, the comparison issue. I like that, that phrase, the comparison issue of we're constantly comparing ourselves to other mums who don't, then they're not parenting the same way they've got different values different priorities and yet we're still comparing ourselves against them i think um social media really doesn't help with that because people are presenting a very polished view you know the pictures we put up don't tend to be when we've just shouted at the children uh when we've failed to get the bed linen changed because there's been other things maybe the dog's been sick maybe someone else has been poorly there's been a million things to do that day we don't post that we we post all the glamorous side of parenting we post when we cook them you know the perfect meal as opposed to fish and uh, you know fish and chips or beans on toast or or whatever you've done because you've not had much time that day we don't share those things openly and so because we don't share them ourselves we don't get that shown back to us either um i think you just got to walk your own path and you know don't worry about what everyone else is doing because every child is different every parent is different you don't have an instruction manual we are making it up as we go along and learning i mean i'm constantly learning my my eldest is now you know going into the teenage years and we have other parenting issues this stuff as a parent doesn't stop once they go to School, it continues and it evolves and I think that that will if I'm parenting in the way I hope to be parenting I will still be parenting my children when they've left home you know yeah. I will still be that first port of call or one of the ports of call for them right up until you know the end of time for us and um, I think that's the thing you, you know you're creating relationship parenting really is creating relationships with your children yes yeah. you're disciplining yes you're modeling for them but really it's about what's going on at home and uh, how whether that feels good or not, whether you're all in a good place. And it doesn't matter what everyone else is doing. I, don't, I can't think of another aspect of life where we compare ourselves so much as we do as, as mums. What is it about becoming mums that warps our personality so because much? Because I, I think it's part of that loss of identity. Yeah. Because we were people, my children just the other day, we were walking along and they kind of go, it's really weird to think that you actually were alive before we were. You know, they can't get their heads around the fact that at one point I didn't know daddy and that, you know, I may have had other boyfriends or I travel parts of the world and I'd had other careers and other jobs and experiences that didn't include them. We lose so much of ourselves when we have babies. And that's because initially we're very tired. And then, you know, there is all this concern that we're not doing it right. And for me, I wanted to be the best mum I could be when they were tiny. Not that that's stopped now, but it's a different, it's a different thing. 
And I know I completely subjugated myself, my desires, my passions, my interests, my creativity for a very long time. And that ultimately led to me being very unhappy. And I, although I had physical problems with SPD, actually it was that unhappiness and that sense of feeling stuck that I think allowed me to become that unwell in the first place. I think there's all sorts of stuff that goes on in our subconscious mind that comes out physically. And unfortunately, mine was very, very dramatic but equally the plus side to that is every difficult thing we go through we learn we grow and there's for me always a silver lining to the cloud and that's definitely the journey that I've been on and so if if you're out there listening anyone or watching and things aren't in your life the way you want them to be start looking at what tiny changes you can start to make what can you do to look after yourself what can you do that makes you tick so even if that is just sitting down for a few minutes and working out what comes next in your day, planning, like Jessica says, or or just knowing that there's there's more out there, that there are other mums who are out there doing interesting things and that that's okay too. So thank you so much. I know how much you've got. I mean, you've got three kids, so straight away you've got loads of stuff to fit in. Um, but clearly you're obviously doing lots of amazing time management um <laughs> yeah, i think you have to with th- my kids are at three different schools in, in three to two different towns so um my school pickup is crazy at the moment so oh, yeah awesome. i do have to just to keep the family the family ticking over and all of their clubs and activities i have to plan my time and that is one thing that i would highly recommend to people yeah well thank you very much for making us a priority today it does mean so much like i said big sort of fangirl moment when you came back and said yes yes i can do it and I was, um big one for me that was a happy moment that was that was a good moment good moment and so how is best for people to to find you to get inspired by what you're doing to connect with you what's your your preferred method so really, if you go to our website, www.inspiringmummyclub.com, we have a free meditation. So I've talked quite a lot about doing three minutes just for yourself. That is available for free for you. Um, and also on the webpage, you'll be able to find a direct link to our webs- our Facebook group where lots of kind of good conversations happening, um, starting to give you a free community of women that are wanting to have a better life for themselves. Um, and yeah that's it listen out for our podcast as well all of those are also on the website or you can listen to them on itunes or stitch or however you normally listen to podcasts um and yeah just um just check out that free meditation track and get using it because it can be a lifesaver amazing oh again thank you so much i will link everything down below uh, wherever you're finding this video and um yeah i'm hoping we'll get you on some future videos i definitely definitely got some topics i think you'd be amazing to hear speaking on great lovely well thank you so much for having me jessica you're very welcome and we'll see you soon thank you for watching i really look forward to connecting with you on this amazing journey through motherhood and remember being a super mum is all about being the mum that you want to be Remember, don't forget to hit subscribe and turn on your notifications to never miss out on a video again.